25 seasons, the second city is finally focused on finishing first. All right, Bob, and among the many reasons that the Bulls have had their way against the Lakers, and we have frequently talked about the Bulls' superb defensive play throughout the series, but what stands out is the manner in which they have completely bottled up the Magic Man, Magic Johnson. Marv, not to take anything away from Magic's performance, where he's averaged 19 points per game, 10 assists, 7 rebounds, and shooting 94% from the free throw line, but the Bulls' decision on how to defend him has taken its toll. The Bulls decided to harass Magic at all times. Alternate playing him with Jordan and Pippen, a bigger defender. Don't let him stand in direct traffic. Take away his vision and run the next defender at him at selective times to distort his shots. Now, the answer to the problem is a healthy James Worthy. Unfortunately, he's not going to play this evening. Right, as Bob mentioned uh, moments ago, both James Worthy and Byron Scott are sidelined by injury, so Terry Teagle and A.C. Green will be in the starting lineup. Well, Teagle and Green may be getting their opportunity, but both will have to do better than four points per game and shoot much better than 20% if the Lakers ought to have a chance. And Mike Dunleavy was telling us that he will use both rookies, Tony Smith and Eldon Campbell, off the bench. They have seen very little time thus far in this uh, final series. And from Chicago's point of view, you have to wonder, are there any adjustments for Phil Jackson to make? The Bulls made their big adjustment. That was after game one when they decided to get more people involved offensively. At the end of game one, Grant, Paxson, Cartwright, six points apiece, total of 18. But in the next three games, they combined to average over 42 points per game, all Chicago wins. The Bulls' defense has been outstanding, holding the Lakers to 89 points per game. Their bench has been very productive. So I guess we could say, if it's working well, don't mess with it. The form crowd into it here the start. They have had their ups and downs in the cheering department uh, during the final. Lakers control the tip. Magic played by Jordan. Tigo beating Paxson. Yes. Oh, do you think that's a good sign for the Lakers to get a two guard off on the first shot of the game? Something they've missed sorely. Pippen is being guarded by Green. Paxson played by Johnson. Caught right. And Terry a pass to Grant who popped it out. Jordan. The rebound this time. And A.C. Green able to come away with it. That last time down the floor for Chicago, the flashing bull in the middle of the lane is one of the problems that Mike Dunleavy mentioned yesterday. I just can't find the reason for it. They beat us to the spot. It's called speed and quickness. And the flashing bull has usually been Horace Grant. Here's Green. And a blocking foul called on the Lakers. A.C. Green, a very active player. He was a spark during the course of the series against the Portland Trailblazers. The foul called on Horace Grant. A.C. Green, who began the season in the starting lineup with Sam Perkins coming off the bench. His game is running, plays a high-energy style. He is non-stop motion. Look at uh, AC in this series. He has not received the playing time. He had that two for 11 back in game number two. One of the game's most effective offensive rebounders in a sixth year out of Oregon State. So the Lakers with a 3 0 lead. The Chicago Bulls have roared through the playoffs following the 61 and 21 regular season. played by Pippen. Hot right over to help out. Illegal defense called by Jake O'Donnell. Again, at the Bulls offensive end, Bill caught right that time, flashing in front of Divac two times. The Bulls have flashed in there and have beaten the Lakers defenders to the spot. Granted, they haven't scored yet, but it's a long night. Lakers get the new 24. Eagle forced it. Although when you talk of Terry Teagle, I don't know if there is such a thing as a forced shot. Here's Paxson. Yes. And the Lakers lead by the score of 3-2. to two. John Paxson, a, a major factor in the success 
of the Chicago Bulls in this final series. He has shot 62% for the series. 7 for 11, 15 points on Sunday. Perkins, he was hit. Sam Perkins hoping to turn it from the 1 for 15 the other night. And that time they actually came at Perkins from two different directions. One defender came from the baseline side anticipating they may force him back. You see Pippen there, and then Jordan at the last minute comes from the top, actually drew a triple team that time. They do not want Perkins to get off early this evening. Not right. Called for the foul. I mentioned at the start of the season, A.C. Green was in the Laker starting line of Sam Perkins, telling us he was not comfortable with the Lakers and coming over from Dallas. Did not know the plays, took a while. Now he is comfortable, and he has come up strong during the course of the playoffs prior to what took place on Sunday. And he could not buy one. But Perkins has extended to a 5-2 Laker lead. Two minutes have gone by. Ron Wright establishing possession. d trying to draw the foul. The rebound handled by Perkins. I'd say this officiating crew right now has said, we're going to let you play a little bit tonight. You can go at each other. Last touch by the Bulls. Lakers with 15 on the shot clock. Now caught right match with Perkins. And Magic backing Jordan. Devon's. Divots on the photo. Actually, Magic was trying to throw a skip pass across to A.C. Green. He intercepted it. John Paxson drilling home his second from the corner. This time the other side of the Lakers lead it. 7-4. Magic from downtown. And the Bulls reset. Tripping foul, sending Jordan sprawling. Nice return from Cartwright. And in the first three and a half minutes, Michael Jordan just kind of going through the motions out here, spreading the ball around, getting everybody involved. But he sees he has a give and go, gives the pass up, cuts to the basket. The trip right there saves a the layup. A.C. Green called for the foul, not shooting a fair. Jordan looking for Cartwright. Here's Pippen. And Pivots taking it on the hop. Terry Teagle in his brief stints has played Michael Jordan very tough, and that time he prevented the shot. Perkins firing it high and wide. Here comes Paxson off the dribble, and he is fouled. A rare opportunity to see John Paxson putting the move on the drive. Here is the rookie from Clemson, Elvin Campbell, making an early entrance. And Sam Perkins will sit down. Cliff Levingston, who has been a spark off the bench, replacing Horace Grant. Cliff Levingston had a, an interesting uh, theory, did not get much playing time during the regular season he's really come out of the playoffs but he said should make him stronger for the years to come Magic fouled on the play feels his legs are well rested he'll put a couple of extra years on his career that's why they call him good news he's yes. going to find something positive in every situation and Levingston called for the foul it put Chicago over the limit Magic Johnson to the line we're just under three minutes remaining in this opening quarter. Lakers with a 19-17 lead. Well, the Magic uh, Michael matchup, both logging the minutes. And Michael Jordan has actually taken the lead in the assist department over Magic Johnson. Bulls with the ball trailing by three. Pass intended for Jordan. Able to recover. Here's Pippen. And last touch by Pippen. 
That may be the first loose ball that I can remember the Lakers coming up with. Lottie Devots and John Paxson in a heated discussion away from the ball. The last thing the Lakers need right now is for a player to be ejected from the game. The crowd cheering the aggressiveness of the Los Angeles Lakers, a quality we have rarely seen during this final series. Teagle drawing the double team. And Jake O'Donnell with the call against the Lakers. And here's another look as uh, Devots was called for the foul. Lottie Devots in the face of John Paxson and Cliff Levingston coming over. Lottie says no problem. Everything's okay. That's Levingston, yes, backcourt violation. <laughs> Levingston went from front court to back. Why, Jack Nicholson made the call right behind him. There were a lot of people making that call. Levingston had taken off in the front court. That's where his position was still established. Touched the ball and then came down in the backcourt. Coming up on two minutes. Remaining in this first quarter, Jordan off the steal. Michael Jordan with his second field goal. An emphatic stuff by Jordan. Here's Campbell. Yes, and it counts. The Bulls defense finds a way to get easy scores. Fourth in the league this year in steals. Jordan, one of the best pickpockets you're going to find, and then one of the best finishers at that end. Pre-designed spots on offense for the Lakers. All you got to do is get there. When they double magic, he'll find you. Levingston called for the foul. Eldon Campbell played briefly in the overtime game here in Los Angeles Friday night. You may recall he came on for the, the opening tip of overtime with Bloody Devots in foul trouble. Won the tip, then hit a uh, short uh, jump shot. But that's been it in this series for Campbell. Caught right. In contact with Devot. Oh, what a shot by Bill Conrad. And Devot was right there with the extended hand challenging the shot. And back come the Bulls. Lakers lead at 23 21. Here's Jordan. A gorgeous move again by Michael Jordan going at Bloody Devot strong and then able to lay it home softly. Magic Thorpe, he was fouled. No call. And here's Pippen. The Bulls take a 25-23 lead. First time they have led. Well, with the entire rest of the Laker team down on the baseline, if the turnover comes out top, there's no one to cover the backcourt. Not a good play a moment ago by the Lakers. Campbell lost the grip. Magic waiting for a foul call. As a result, he just stayed in front court. Did not make the play. You can't do that. And as a result, the Bulls were able to fast break. Teagle called for his second. 40 seconds remaining in this first quarter. Well, tonight's celebrity watch, including you saw Jesse Jackson, Dustin Hoffman, Spike Lee, and there's Jack, who we're told is negotiating to play Jimmy Hoffa in an upcoming motion picture, and reportedly he has requested that a role be written in for this man. Michael Jordan, some people will go to great lengths to hang around with certain people. A little one-on-one, -on -one, though, on the set. Second quarter underway, and the Bulls with a 27-25 lead. That, a three-pointer for Craig Hodges. So Craig Hodges continues to drill from outside and hit. He has had an excellent series against the Lakers. Perkins. Perkins on the recovery. So Sam Perkins 0 for 2 thus far tonight, following the, the 1 for 15 in game four. Perkins posting, and he took a hit from behind. Cliff Levingston picks up his third. You know, to go back a moment ago, 
when the Bulls knocked out the three-pointer. It's the first time the Lakers have gone to the 1-3-1 half-court trap this early in a basketball game. Mike Dunleavy trying to shake things up. The problem is they went into it when Hodges was on the floor. His assignment, go right to the corner anytime you see a trap and knock down the three. He Ar certainly answered. Horace Grant back. Cliff Levingston departs. Green lost it. And it will be Chicago ball. Michael Jordan, Frank Hodges in the backcourt. Scotty Pippen up front with Scott Williams and Horace Grant. Jordan trying to get it out. Rare turnover committed by the Bulls. They coughed it up only five times on Sunday night. That was a record low for an NBA Final Series. Oh. With the good pass from Perkins. I think you can see, as soon as they came up with the steal, A.C. Green just kind of dribbled off to the side rather than try to attack at the other end. Ten points for turnovers for the Bulls, none for the Lakers. Tony Smith called for that foul. After the double team, the Lakers go to their designed areas on the floor. It's a matter of passing and catching to convert. Now it's Tony Smith, the rookie from Marquette, a second-round draft pick guarding Michael Jordan. The officials say last touch by the Bulls. Tony Smith had an excellent game against the Chicago Bulls here at the Forum during the regular season. In fact, he was player of the game. At the game that saw Magic Johnson go down with an injury. And there is Smith. Bringing the Lakers within one. Yeah, and that was a two-point game at the time when Magic went down with the injury. He played the entire fourth quarter, Smith. They wound up winning by 13. For a while during the season, Pippen threw the foul. Pippen is now four for five from the line. As a senior at Marquette, Tony Smith averaged 24 a game, although he shot. Only 41%. He was noted for his defensive play. Pressure by the Bulls. Green going all the way. Able to shake Grant, who did not want to pick up number three. See, that's normally where Worthy is, who has the ability to put it on the floor and take it to the basket. They've been missing that since James has had the injury. A.C. Green, two times now we've seen him do it this game. One, he missed a shot. That time he converted. Scott Williams called for the travel. Phil Jackson is upset. Phil Jackson taking a long walk as a timeout is called. The Bulls lead it 32-31 with 9.35 to go. First half. And the form is jumping. The crowd trying to get the home club going. Looking to extend to a game six in Chicago on Friday night. Tony Smith handling against Craig Hodges. So Smith and Johnson in the backcourt. Campbell up front, Wallet Perkins and Green. Shot clock is down to eight. Smith had an ocean. Smith with the drive. So Tony Smith off the bench to hit his first two. The Lakers lead at 33-32. And that's one of the reasons why Smith was a low percentage shooter in college because he was so good at putting it on the floor and so strong going to the basket. His perimeter game was not worked on. Hodges. Yes. Craig Hodges hitting two of two. The Bulls lead by one. Keep in mind the entire series, the Bulls have had an incredible ability to answer the challenge each time the Lakers try to make a run. Perkins, well, someone lost an assignment. And Perkins with his first field goal. Lakers with a one-point lead. And the Lakers actually extending their man-to-man -man defense. A.C. Green, Tony Smith starting to move up and guard their people. And a defense from this crowd of better than 17,000. Pippen with the move around Green. And the foul call. A strong move to the right by Scottie Pippen. He was met by Elvin Campbell, who was called for the foul. And Smith, big, strong, and the ability to put it on the floor can get inside the lane and help break down the Bulls' defense. B.J. Armstrong has come on for the first time. There's B.J. in his second year out of Iowa. 
Scotty Pippen to the free throw line. And here's Vladi Divac back for Eldon Campbell. AC Green also departing. So it is Divac up front with Perkins, and now a change. Campbell remains, and Green will sit down. Campbell, Devon, Perkins on the front line. Bulls lead by one. Pressure by Chicago. And the Lakers back to Devon, bringing it up, and he lost it. Jordan off the steal. Again, we hate to keep saying it, but that's part of the problem when you have a 7-footer, 6'11 guy trying to bring it up the floor. Wild gamble pass. Pippen able to come away with it. Tremendous recovery defensively by the Bulls. Here's Jordan for Grant. Ball knocked away. Bulls wanted a foul. Instead, the Lakers on the run. Campbell. Yes. Oh, what a move by Elton Campbell. The Bulls lead at 38 37. Open court game developing here now. Lakers able to get back on the transition. Pippen putting the move on Campbell. Last touch by Magic. Scotty Pippen is only one for six. This the first ever trip to the finals for the Chicago Bulls in their 25th NBA season. Although back in 1946, the Chicago Stags of the old Basketball Association of America lost to the Philadelphia Warriors four games to one of the BAA's championship series. Grant, and it's an offensive foul. Or did he step out? Oh, apparently stepped out. Magic with a risky pass intended for Campbell. Scotty Pippen to the open. B.J. Armstrong. And the Bulls' backcourt continues to hammer away. Almost every open shot has been drilled through. Timeout taken by Mike Dunleavy. 6.44 remaining. And the first half, the Bulls lead it by three. for three and Grant able to count on the rebound Armstrong and Jordan in the backcourt caught right Grant Pippen up front here's Jordan Michael is now five for eight he has ten and the Bulls lead it 42 37 it matches their biggest lead of the night And what he had in mind, nearly dropped. Here's Campbell. Eldon Campbell off the bench to hit four of five for nine points. Bulls by three. Jordan was fouled. Perkins over to help out. And Michael Jordan will go to the line. For Perkins, his second personal. Eldon Campbell, the rookie from Clemson, a first-round draft pick of the Lakers, getting the playing time in the absence of the injured James Worthy. Here is Teagle. Yes. Terry Teagle has hit four of five. And the Lakers are down by one. Jordan backing Teagle. And Devox off the rebound. Bulls continue to bottle up Magic Johnson. Everywhere he goes, someone's jumping out at him all the time. And the foul on Chico. It is a charge drawn beautifully by Pippen. Scotty Pippen stepping in the path of Terry Teagle to draw the foul. Mike Dunleavy not real happy with that basketball call. He felt it definitely was a late step in that the block should have been called. That's three on Teagle. And the Lakers with an 11th turnover. 
And Madden with the call on the balls. It's a traveling violation. Teagle sits down. Smith returns. AC Green attempting to check in. Mike Mathis says no, too late. And he is sending him back to the scorer's table. The officials trying to straighten out now whether or not he was at the table in time to allow the substitution to take place. The one substitution was permitted. Tony Smith for Terry Teagle. But Mathis pointing out that A.C. Green did not uh, check in at the table in time. Well, that's the guy that Mike Dunleavy has to get off the floor. He's the one with three personal fouls. Eldon Campbell getting the position again. The Lakers recapture the lead. Campbell has 11. The foul call. A little breakdown in communication. The Lakers not talking who was going to play who at the defensive end. As a result, a wide open man underneath. Michael finds him, and now we're trying to recover. The foul takes place, stopping the easy score. That's three on Perkins. And now AC Green allowed to check in, replacing Elvin Campbell, who hears it. From the crowd. Well, Mike Dunleavy changing his mind. Perkins will depart. Campbell will remain on the floor. Perkins sitting down after collecting his third. Grant to the line for the first time. a 71% free throw shooter. Morris Grant admitting he was very nervous for game number one when the Bulls felt they did not play well. They felt they were tentative. They lost only by two points off the uh, three-point shot by Sam Perkins. But since then, Grant has come up solid. Pippen trying to draw the foul. What a job by Scotty Pippen. A.C. Green very fortunate to hold on, although the Lakers felt that there should have been a foul called on Pippen. Here's Green, rejected by Grant. Shot clock, down to three. And a loose ball foul has been called as the 24-second buzzer went off. It's on Green. The quickness of the Chicago Bulls at the defensive end. A.C. Green got up to the top, thought about dunking the thing, instead just shot the little jump hook. It left just enough room for Grant to get the block. With the Lakers over the foul limit, Grant will go to the line. We have seen bursts by the Chicago Bulls. They have come through with some sensational shooting, and they've had a good shooting second quarter. Bulls now lead it 46-45. You can see the tremendous flexibility in the Chicago team. If, if Scottie Pippen can guard Magic Johnson bringing it up, then you know when he goes back and guards A.C. Green and A.C.'s the guy bringing it up, he's going to cause problems for A.C. trying to dribble the ball up the floor. Mike Mathis not uh, satisfied with Green and Pippen lined up uh, so close to the shooter, Horace Grant. You are supposed to be six feet away from the top of the circle, but the defensive player is always allowed on the inside. The Bulls run a little free throw play where they send guys from behind the top of the circle to try and pick up missed free throws. The Bulls by one with just under three minutes remaining in this first half. Last touch by Jordan. And a timeout being taken by Chicago. 46-45, Chicago leading L.A. We'll be right back. Everybody here at the Forum collectively held their breath as Lottie Divac and Michael Jordan collided and bumped knees, and Divac came out hobbling. They thought, oh, no, but it was just that. Bumped knees, Divac is fine. Back to you, Mark. 
All right, Steve, two minutes, 52 seconds remaining in this first half, and the Laker bench for the first time this series has contributed solid numbers. Elvin Campbell and Terry Teagle, who have not done it uh, prior to tonight, not getting the playing time. Teagle in the starting lineup for the injured Byron Scott. Elvin Campbell has come out along with Tony Smith. For those who may have just tuned in, both James Worthy and Byron Scott sidelined by injury. Here's Campbell. Bulls lead 46-45. And Jordan called for travel. Jordan saw the quick opening to his right. He didn't want to give Smith a chance to dig in. As soon as he caught, he started to go right away, shifted his feet. Excellent call. Chicago with 10 turnovers. They committed only five on Sunday night. Here's Magic. He's been off. Pippen on the rebound. The steal by Campbell. Devots kicked out by Paxson. They're so good defensively, Chicago, and so quick recovering that when you take one from it, it's likely they're going to take it right back from you. Coming up at halftime, Bob Costas, Pat Riley. And they will be chatting with one-time Chicago Bulls standout, Norm Van Leer. Nice play. Eldon Campbell from Bloody Devots and the Lakers lead by one. Norm Van Leer, member of the Bulls for seven seasons. He is their all-time assist leader, one of the tougher defensive players in Chicago Bull history. What a backcourt. Norm Van Leer, Jerry Sloan. Here's Jordan. Pippen getting to it. And a traveling violation call. Most unusual to see the Chicago Bulls make that many mistakes. Here's Devots. Threw up a prayer, thought he'd draw the foul. And here come the Bulls on a three on two. Pippen off the hesitation dribble. A spectacular end to end move by Scottie Pippen. The Bulls 48 and the Lakers 47. Minute. And a half to go. First half. Devots call for steps. When you have a Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, where either one has the ability to lead it, take it down the floor, and then make a decision, and probably a good one or finish, what an extra thing to have on your team. Devots jumping out, but he stepped out of bounds. Mike Mathis explaining the call to not only the Chicago and L.A. players, but right in the face of Jack Nicholson. And Devots guesses that time, anticipates the baseline pass, and then goes to that side to come up with the steal or deflection. A conversation at the scorer's table and they are chatting about the time remaining on the shot clock and they're running it down saying that Vladi never had possession of the ball after he knocked it away from the postman as he tried to save it there never really was possession so they should not reset the clock shot clock at eight Bulls with the ball and a one-point lead now Jordan posting up. Campbell over to help. Here's Pippen for three. Magic fires down to Green. Good recovery by the Bulls. And they had a fast break that time, and they're just getting into the offense with 13 seconds left. Oh, nice move by Tony Smith. He had Paxson committed on the fake. Lakers 49, Bulls 48. Smith has hit three of three. Shot clock at seven. Pippen. Rebounded by Pippen. And now the hold for a final shot. Remember, if Jordan goes right, you've got Paxson, the three-point shooter, spotting up. Here's Jordan off the fake. 
Devops. Will it count? No. Lottie Devops racing the clock. And it will not count. What sensational skills for a center to have. Rebound the basketball and then go one-on-one -on -one against the Bulls defense trying to beat the clock. And he's just a youngster in the NBA. At halftime, at the Forum in Inglewood, it's the Lakers 49 and the Bulls 48. Welcome back to the Forum in Inglewood with the Lakers leading the Bulls 49 to 48 and the crowd attempting to urge the Lakers on at Chicago Ball as we get underway in the first half. The Lakers 20 for 40, 50 percent from the field. Chicago 45 percent on 17 for 38. Elvin Campbell off the bench leading the Lakers. Scotty Pippen recapturing the lead for Chicago. Campbell with 13 points on six of eight from the field. Terry Teagle in the starting lineup replacing the injured Byron Scott hit four out of five for nine points. Magic Johnson with six points along with 10 assists. Michael Jordan with 12. Scotty Pippen with 13 against Chicago getting balanced scoring. Here's AC Green. Rebounded by Magic Johnson. And he's fouled. Michael Jordan from the time Magic started to bring the ball up the floor put pressure on him once he gave it up he did not let Magic get it back again to do anything at the offensive end you see the stats on Campbell the rookie out of Clemson Michael Jordan 5 for 11 for his 12 points Magic is 5 for 5 from the line Lakers and Bulls tied at 50. And now the Lakers by one. Five outer, Mike Fratello, Ahmad Rashad, and Steve Jones from the form in Inglewood. Here's Conright. Bill Conright with six points, got off to a slow start, missed his first five field goal attempts, but he's come on. Chicago with a one-point lead. Jordan with the steal. Pippen moving on green. Scotty Pippen has 15. And the Bulls take a 54-51 lead. Michael Jordan knows that Magic Johnson likes to throw that hook pass over the head. He always has his hands ready to go up and try to get a piece of those. He's probably def deflected a half dozen in this series. Teagle with a wild shot. And as you have mentioned, a typical Terry Teagle shot. If you're coaching Terry Teagle, you live and die by the Teagle jumper. Paxson, yes. John Paxson has hit on three of three. The Bulls open strong in this third quarter. They now lead by five. Crowd wanted a foul on Jordan. Magic with the spin the bucket Chicago's lead is three game five of the NBA championship series Lakers hoping to extend to a game six on Friday night Bulls try to wrap it here's green so the Lakers move within one A.C. Green just made a four-point swing right there because Michael Jordan had a wide-open layup on a backdoor move, but A.C. got a piece of the ball with his hands on defense and converted at the offensive end. Jordan got it knocked away by Perkins. A.C. Green from Magic. So the Lakers going to the run. Take a one-point lead. Again, the aggressive defense forcing some mistakes, getting some easy scores as a result. Cartwright. Yes. Bill Cartwright. The Bulls, 58. And the Lakers, 57. Cartwright has hit his last four. Magic for three. Yes.
Lakers by two. So Michael able to answer. And Magic looking to push it down court. Here's Green, stripped by Jordan. Pippen with Perkins back. They change in so quickly. They go from the defense to the offense and make you pay the price. The ball 62 and the Lakers 60. For early third. A torrid start at both ends. Teagle. And Grant with the rebound. Pippen. Oh, Scotty Pippen has broken loose in this third quarter. He has cashed in for eight of his 19 here in the third. The Bulls by four. Timeout has been called. Chicago Bulls with six unanswered have taken a 64-60 lead with 7.27 remaining. In the third, a moment ago, Magic Johnson hit that uh, shot from downtown. L.A. 0 for 15 from three-point range prior to the three-pointer by Magic. They had not hit one since game two. Magic's last three-point field goal, game one. Teagle wide open. Perhaps too open. The last two shots went in and came out. That one was a wide open look, and it was the worst miss. Michael Jordan will go to the free throw line. As Terry Teagle has committed his fourth. Well, Jordan knows that if he can put the fourth on Teagle, that's one of the offensive threats out of the game. He goes right at it, takes it off the dribble. Fourth foul on Teagle. Tony Smith. The rookie from Marquette will come on for Terry Teagle. Smith played 11 minutes in the first half and hit three for three from the field. 15 points for Jordan. So Teagle sits down four for eight from the floor for nine points. Michael Jordan seeking his 16th point. Patrick Johnson, 13 points, 11 assists, six rebounds. The Bulls have taken a six-point lead. It is their biggest lead of the game. Evox, Perkins, and Green up front. Smith and Johnson in the backcourt. Sam Perkins to the foul line. Scotty Pippen raising his hand. And he has called for his first. Bulls changing up their defensive tactics. Instead of playing behind Perkins, staying in front of him, all the time staying in front, forcing the lob pass, and then relying on the weak side help or rotation from away from the basketball to stop the score. It has been another quiet evening for Sam Perkins. One for 15 in game number four on Sunday. He's one for four thus far tonight. And three out of three from the line. But one of the differences between Perkins and the post-up people for the Bulls, he kind of meanders across the lane, allows Chicago to put a body on him and ride him out of his good position, whereas the Bulls flash and get there quickly. Jordan, yes. 18 for Jordan. The Bulls by six. Phil Jackson contending that Tony Smith stepped out of bounds off that dribble move. Magic off the double team, lost it. And here comes Pippen. The reverse slam by Pippen, who has destroyed the Lakers here in the third quarter. There's that scrambling Bulls defense making things happen from the weak side or blind side where Magic can't see when they turn him. Pippen's coming. The result, another easy two points. Scotty Pippen with 10 of his 21 here in the third. The Bulls in the midst of a 12-2 run. Perkins from downtown. Perkins. 
70-65, Chicago. You can see the Bulls on fire. 10 of 11 from the field. Pippen. And Perkins on the rebound. This has been a pattern for Chicago right throughout the playoffs. Magic. That's a three-pointer. And the Lakers within two as they've gone to the long-range bomb. Looking to counter the hot Chicago shooting. Each game of this series, Chicago has had one or two stretches where they have been on fire. They are in the midst of it here. Paxson makes it four out of four. And again, just when the Lakers get it going, just when the crowd gets into it, they answer. Magic again trying for the three. Four-point Chicago lead. Crowd looking for the travel. Here's Jordan for Grant. And the foul committed by Devots. That is his second. Well, the Lakers knew they were in trouble when it was Michael Jordan on the sideline being played by Vlade Divac. Immediately, the Lakers sent another guy over to double team and help out. As Magic comes, Michael decides, I'm going to get away from him, go down to the baseline where I feel real comfortable, always looking for his open teammates in the middle of the lane. Morris Grant, two for four from the foul line. Four minutes, 24 seconds remaining in this third quarter. Did you know that Horace and Harvey Grant are with Tom and Dick Van Arsdale, the only twins ever to have played in the NBA? That's my fact for the night. Yes, I knew that. Just checking. You know, I thought we were attacked by a crazed fan. It will be. Laker ball. You know, I thought we were attacked by a crazed fan at halftime, and by golly, I think we were. <laughs> we were attacked by a crazy, you're right. Chicago by five as we come up on four minutes remaining in this third quarter. Devots, he went to the crossover dribble. Perkins. Chicago looking for the clean block, but a foul call. Let's go back a moment ago and take a look whether or not there was a deflection on that pass by Vlade Divac as he looks cross-court. The ball sailing over everyone's head. No one touched the basketball. A gift for the Lakers. Bill Cartwright was called for the foul. That's four on Cartwright. Sam Perkins, four for four from the foul line. 82% from the line over the regular season. And only 68% in this series going into tonight's game. The ball 73, the Lakers 69. It is all on the line for the Lakers. The Bulls win. It is all over. If the Lakers can win, it goes back to Chicago for a game six on Friday night. Smith nearly picked it off. Jordan with the shot clock rolling down. Magic fires for Smith. Good recovery. It counts. Tony Smith with the field goal and the foul called on Pippen. Michael Jordan hasn't taken many bad shots in this series, but this one with a couple defenders hanging on him leads to the easy score and potential three-point play. Patrick Johnson reacting to the good effort by Tony Smith. The Bulls call for time. They lead by two. As a Chicago Bull, Jordan was Rookie of the Year in 1985, and since then he's been the most valuable player two times. He's won five straight scoring titles.
A reminder at the end of tonight's telecast, we'll select the Miller Genuine Draft Player of the game. 3.35 remaining in the third quarter. The Bulls lead the Lakers 73-71, and Tony Smith will go to the foul line hoping to complete a three-point play. That lead pass for Magic Johnson accounted for his 13th assist. Tony Smith has done the job off the bat. Nine points for Smith. The Bulls now lead it by one. Jordan and Paxson in the backcourt. Will Purdue has replaced Bill Cartwright. He is up front, along with Grant and Pippen. Good double team. Campbell over to help. Here is Pippen. Scotty Pippen has 23, and the Bulls lead 75-72. Michael Jordan always seems to get that good look at the floor to find the open player, whether it's in the lane or entirely on the other side of the floor. Traveling violation on Smith. If you double-team Jordan, it's got to be tight. You have to come big. You can't let him look across the floor, sideline to sideline. Scotty Pippen, 23 points, five steals, six rebounds. He's led the Chicago surge here in the third. Paxson lost the grip. Lakers look to break. And a traveling violation called on Magic Johnson. When it's going bad, the most unlikely things happen. Magic with a wide-open fast-break situation. The ball just doesn't come up. As a result, the carry turnover. Magic looking at those hands saying, don't fail me now. Ball's back in possession, leading by three. And a reach-in foul on Smith. It's a non-shooting foul for Smith, his second. Pippen. Magic checking the floor for a fast break opportunity. And E.C. Green making the good catch to put it down. Back come the Bulls, and it will be Laker ball. Bulls trying to score right back at the Lakers after Magic measured this one up and laid it right on the money for AC. Bulls by one. Chicago with its 14th turnover. Lakers have 16. Evats had it knocked away. Trying to get a little too fine with that pass attempt to Green. But the Lakers had all the spots filled. It was just a matter of finding the open guy and delivering. He held just a little bit too long. Eldon Campbell. Looked like he changed his mind on the way up. Pippen on the acceleration. Stopped by Campbell. It will be Laker ball. And that's all you ask of players. If you know you take a bad shot or if you know you make a mistake, don't hang your head. Just go and get it back for us at the other end. Exactly what Campbell did with the block shot. Campbell, an excellent shot blocker. Led the ACC in block shots last season. Lakers cough it up. 127 remaining. In the third, the Bulls 75 and the Lakers 74. High number of turnovers for both clubs, in particular by the Bulls, who rarely are called for turnovers. And the foul called on the Lakers. That is their third team foul. It's on Campbell. When Michael goes baseline, the rest of the Lakers must come to help out because he either can finish by going underneath the rim or he has the great ability to pull it back, reverse dribble, and take it in the middle. Right there, you can see he has collapsed the Laker defense where all five gold shirts are surrounding Jordan. The stat line on Michael Jordan, 7 for 14 from the field. Now 4 out of 5 from the foul line. Here's B.J. Armstrong. Replacing John Paxson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So the Bulls lead at 76, 74. Buddy Devon's helping out. And there's that weak side attack as Jordan takes the lob off the back pick play and slams it down. But going back to the Lakers, there's that weak side attack which has been missing. Get the ball out of the post and reverse it. The Bulls 78 and the Lakers 76. Time winding down in the third. Ebot's putting the move on Purdue. Campbell. Career high 15 for Eldon Campbell, and the game is tied at 78. Pippen played by Green. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Here's Jordan. Oh, what a move by Michael Jordan. Going to the left hand and able to squeeze through to give the Bulls a two-point lead. Down to 10 seconds remaining in the quarter. Magic, right there, drops it off, and Campbell ties it at 80, final seconds, Pippen gets it off, looking to draw the foul, no call, after three, at the four, the Bulls and the Lakers are tied at 80, Scotty Pippen with the lead for Michael Jordan, both clubs shot exceptionally well in the third quarter. They're both 31 for 59 overall for the game at 53% shooting. Smith whipping it. Green stepped out. And it will be Chicago ball. The Bulls 14 for 21 from the floor in the third for 67%. And the Lakers 11 for 19 shooting in the third. When the Lakers are trying to play pick and roll with Magic, you have to screen people. They've got to be solid screens. You can't miss the defender. B.J. Armstrong. And again, the Bulls get to the loose ball. Horace Grant from Scottie Pippen. Chicago leads by two. The hustle, the, the athleticism gets you to the loose balls first. Purdue stepping out, and he was called for the foul. Good play initially by Will Purdue, but then he was hit with the reach in. A moment ago, Smith firing underneath the AC. AC just not able to control. Here's Magic. And Purdue picks it up. As Eldon Campbell hit the deck. He'll go to the foul line. Eldon Campbell grew up down the street from the form in Inglewood. He says that his look scared off scouts, mistaking his stoic manner for lack of intensity, and that's why he lasted as long he's, as he did late in the first round. I think there were a few more questions uh, than that, than just his stoic expression. It was whether or not he was going to show up every night during the 82-game regular season. It's a long season in the NBA. There were many nights in college that he was missing from his collegiate team. Well, the expression gave off the feeling that he did not care at times. And he has played well in his uh, first NBA season. Has not received the playing time of the finals extensively until this evening. Here's Pippen, changed his mind. Grant had it knocked away by Campbell. Pippen, Scotty Pippen with 25 points. 12 of the 25 coming in the third quarter. The Bulls 84 and the Lakers 82. Lonnie Devots. And it will be Los Angeles ball. Last touch by Chicago. Chicago Bulls looking to make it a clean sweep here in L.A. Lakers have lost four straight games at home in the finals. They have dropped two straight to Detroit back at 89. A.C. Green has tied it at 84. 
So the two straight losses to Detroit. And they've lost two in a row to the Bulls coming into tonight. Two minutes gone by in the fourth. Marv Albert, Mike Fratello, Amon Rashad, Steve Jones, Michael Jordan. Yes. He has 25. Chicago by two. Once again, the Lakers looking to run. Off the out-of-bounds play, most people just content to get it in, but not Magic. Always looking for his teammates under the basket. Simple inbounds pass turns into a great look and score. Pippen was called for that foul, and a timeout has been taken. Welcome back to the Forum in Inglewood, California. 9.51 remaining in the fourth quarter, and the Bulls lead the Lakers 86-84. The rookies, Tony Cam uh, Eldon Campbell and Tony Smith. My apologies to uh, Tony Campbell of the Minnesota T-Wolves, Mike. Eldon Campbell and Tony Smith have done the job off the bench. Eldon 8 for 11 from the field. And Tony Smith 5 for 5. Laker ball. They are down by two. Here's Perkins. The game is tied at 86. And Will Purdue that time gave Perkins a little too much space to turn and see the basket instead of having that body up against him tight. Jordan with the open shot. And the loose ball foul called on Will Perdue. So he's picked up a quick three. Came on for Bill Cartwright after Cartwright collected his four. Now Scott Williams will check in, replacing Will Perdue. Chicago Bulls looking to win their first ever NBA championship. For the Lakers, it is their ninth appearance in the finals over the last 12 years. A remarkable record. Scott Williams called for the foul. And the Bulls piling the fouls up here in the fourth quarter. They are already over the limit. Scott Williams hasn't earned enough stars or badges yet to be able to come in and double forearm a Sam Perkins in the low post. Bill Cartwright, perhaps it's okay. Scott Williams, no, not yet. Perkins, five for six from the free throw line. 13 points for Sam Perkins. Lakers lead by one. Biggest lead of the game, a margin of eight. Bulls led 70, 62. Earlier, Lakers led by as many as five. They now lead by two. Armstrong and Jordan in the backcourt. Pippen, Williams, and Grant up front. Traveling violation. So many small things add up in a championship series. If you go back to game three, the overtime loss for the Lakers, they shoot only 64% from the foul line, miss nine free throws, and lose in overtime. They're shooting over 85% today. They were an 80% free throw shooting team for the regular season. This could be a 2-2 series very easily. And the call against Perkins is steps. A host of turnovers. Committed at both ends. Lakers with 19. The Bulls with 15. Perkins just changing feet as he tries to make his offensive move to travel. And the foul called on Smith. A stutter step move by Michael Jordan to set it up. Tony Smith called for his third foul. And... And that's where Michael Jordan is the toughest to play, at the top of the circle with the basketball, because now he has both directions to go in, and he can pull the defense from each wing and find an open teammate. Tough to guard him one-on-one -on -one there. That was only the first team foul for the Lakers. A.C. Green with the rebound. Magic backing Jordan. 
Perkins for three. Rebound, Magic. And he keeps it alive. There's Magic. Rejected. And Armstrong's pass picked off. Smith's pass picked off by Armstrong. Two on one. Pippen. Fouled by Perkins. What a tremendous series of defensive plays by both teams. They're going to award the ball out of bounds. The, the interpretation on that, there are two degrees of flagrant foul. The A degree means that you're really not playing the basketball and trying to stop the shot, that you're playing the person. That means you shoot the free throws and get it out on the side. The second level of flagrant foul, the B interpretation, could mean an ejection if you're trying to hurt someone. So it is flagrant foul A that is indicated Pippen gets the two and then Chicago receives possession and Mike Dunleavy right there talking to Jake O'Donnell saying you know in his opinion he was trying to block the shot not just playing the player's body Mike Mathis who made the call the same official who made the call in game three which the Lakers feel rather was game two where the Lakers felt that it turned it around Lakers and Bulls tied at 88. 7.40 remaining in the fourth. Now Campbell on Jordan. Went to the fadeaway. What a move by Michael Jordan. He has 27. So a four-point play for Chicago to take a two-point lead. And a foul. All shooting fouls right here. The Bulls are... Over the limit, Scott Williams collecting his second. Michael Jordan can sense that the crowd is in it, that the Lakers are in it. He's going to take it into his own hands. He starts actually in the middle of the lane and finishes up four feet outside the lane line on that shot. Tony Smith missing on his first. He was only 40 for 57 from the line during the season. 70% foul shooter. The Bulls 90. And the Lakers, 89. Grant picking off Smith, allowing the jumper by Jordan. Rebounded by Magic. A lead for Green. AC Green beating Scotty Pippen. Providing the Lakers with a one-point lead. It's just knowing the guy that you're passing the ball to, what his ability is to catch it, and how high he can get up. 13 for Green. Jordan. He was stopped by Campbell. Excellent play by Eldon Campbell. It will be Laker ball. Timeout has been called by Chicago. The form is rocking. The Lakers lead the Bulls 91-90. Let's go over to Steve Jones. I remember, 4.46 to go in the first game back here at the Forum. They played that song, We Love L.A. That song, since I have been coming to the Forum, has been the gift of death for the Los Angeles Lakers. they got a one-point advantage right now, and they hope that that song does not show up tonight. Back to you, Mark. An ominous note from Steve with 6.47 remaining in the fourth quarter. Magic Johnson working against Michael Jordan. Magic with 16 points, 18 assists. Campbell! Now, did that go in from Magic, or was it Campbell? Bill Jackson complaining to the official that the ball actually was going in the cylinder, and Campbell reached up and touched it. It should be waved off, in his opinion. Keep an eye now. If the ball is in the cylinder when Campbell touches it, no basket. Again, a look from a different angle. The ball, the cylinder, and when Campbell touches it from that angle, it almost looks like he does guide it into the basket. 
Does he touch before it gets to the cylinder? I say good basket. Now the officials discussing it, they do not have the luxury of the replay from our angle here at midcourt. At first, it appeared that Magic did shoot it and drilled it home with Campbell guiding it in. Then you look at the replay, I agree with, uh, with your opinion. Remember, if Campbell touches the ball before it gets in that cylinder, then it's a good basket. As Elvin goes up, the ball's outside the cylinder. There's the touch, and then he guides it in. And the indication that the basket does count. Such a tough call because they are checking the memory bank. So the basket counts, and the foul called on Levingston. Elvin Campbell to the line. He's three for three from the line. Lakers 93, the Bulls 96 and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Paxson and Jordan now in the backcourt. Pippen, Cartwright, and Levingston up front. Trying to get Jordan in the isolation on the left side of the floor. The other four Bulls on the right side. Pippen with the open shot for three. Scotty Pippen has tied it. 30 points for Scotty Pippen. He had 12 in the third to lead the ball. Magic's pass deflected and picked off by Levingston. Those are the great hands of the Bulls, always up anticipating Magic's over the head hook pass. Green over to help. Shot clock at six. Conkright. Yeah. Oh, what a play by Pippen to keep it alive. And Perkins just jumped a little too soon. He mistimed his jump. He was on the way down while Pippen was on the way up. Shot clock at 10. Game tied at 93. Paxson with the open shot. Up the Lakers. Magic fires off the dribble to Smith. Jordan batting it away. Jordan tied up by Campbell. Jordan claiming that he was calling for a timeout. And he got the call. Jake O'Donnell at first not able to really understand what Jordan was doing down there when Jordan jumped up and said that was a timeout I was calling. Jake said you're right you had the possession and I'll recognize that before the jump ball took place. The scramble for the ball right there possession timeout. Good call. The Bulls and the Lakers each have three full timeouts they each have a 20. The Bulls have been over the foul limit since early this fourth quarter. Lakers have two fouls to give. 5.08 remaining in the fourth. It is game five of the best of seven NBA championship series. Lakers trailing three games to one. Hoping to bring this series back to Chicago for a game six on Friday night. Magic. Michael have gone the distance. Neither has sat down. Pippen, who has had a sensational game, leading the way with 30 points. Shot clock out of two. Pippen has to force it. Bulls and Lakers tied at 93. The rookie Tony Smith out of Marquette. The rookie Elvin Campbell out of Clemson have come up big here this evening. Smith off a double team. Perkins, shot clock at two. Smith has to fire. Jordan on the rebound. A poor job of screening out in front as Magic tried to come off the pick and roll. As a result, the defense was able to stay at home. Foul called on Smith. Keep a look at the top of the circle. This is supposed to be a pick and roll. You've got to screen Michael Jordan. You can't miss him. We call that screening air. As a result, Jordan never gets off of magic. Foul on Smith is fourth. Lottie Devon's returning. Eldon Campbell sitting down with 21 points. 
Shot right. Stopped by Divas. Paxson shooting. John Paxson gives the Bulls a 95-93 lead. Paxson is 5 for 7. He has 12 points. Open shot for Perkins. Caught right on the rebound. Can't ask for a much better look. 16-footer in the foul line area, wide open, no one playing. Paxson open again. John Paxson continues to provide the crushing shots. The Bulls 97, the Lakers 93, and the Lakers will talk it over. Timeout taken. John Paxson has drilled two more clutch jump shots, providing the Bulls with a 97-93 lead. John, in his eighth year out of Notre Dame, spent two seasons with San Antonio. This is sixth year with Chicago. His older brother Jim, a standout player over 11 years with Portland and Boston. Their dad played in the NBA in the late 50s. He shot just under 55% during the regular season, and he's at 62-plus for the final series. Yeah, and 44% from the three-point line, and only 41 as Sam Perkins misses on a three-point attempt. Only 41 free throws taken this year. And here's Paxson. Six consecutive for John Paxson. And the Bulls lead 99-93, just under three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. The point I'm trying to make, only 41 free throws, is that this guy doesn't shoot a high percentage because he's a driver, slasher. He's a pull-up jump shooter. Perkins. So Perkins to the driving hook. And the Bulls now lead 99-95. And a defense from this form crowd. Jordan with the crossover and the bucket. He goes wherever he wants to on the basketball floor. That's how good he is. 29 for Michael Jordan. The Bulls lead by six as they gun for their first ever NBA championship. And the foul call on the Bulls. It's on Paxson. One of the few layup opportunities for Paxson is the fast break situation. When he gets out in front, they go and give it to him. Jordan against the double team, the triple team, the rotating defense, the pump fake, the rotations, still finds a way to score. Sam Perkins, seven for eight from the free throw line. This is a game that has been close throughout at one stretch. Chicago had an eight-point lead. The Bulls led by as many as five. And the Bulls have a five-point advantage. We're coming up on two minutes remaining in the fourth. Paxson open again. He has been unconscious. 18 for Paxson. He's hit 8 of 11 from the field. Seven-point lead for Chicago. Perkins. It's been all Sam Perkins offensively. Cartwright called for his fifth. The Bulls execute their offense so well. A little scissor cut cross off the post. Two defenders for the Lakers. Go to Jordan, Paxson wide open. The rest of the bench loves it. They execute their half-court offense as well as anyone in the league. Perkins, 8 for 10 from the foul line. Lakers have hit 21 of 27 from the free throw line. Bulls lead 103-97. Since the 2-3-2 format was instituted, the team with the four home games has won nine out of ten times the exception of the lakers over boston in 85 but the bulls after losing the home court advantage losing to the lakers in game one come back tie the series and they are trying to make it three out of three here in los angeles
Holding foul, says Jake O'Donnell. It went in, but will not count. The fourth team foul committed by the Lakers. So it is a non-shooting affair. Jordan being played by Smith. And that's a dribbling violation. Michael Jordan has been called for steps a couple of times this evening. It'll be Laker ball, but first a timeout taken with 1.25 remaining. The Bulls of Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, and John Paxson have taken over here on the fourth quarter. Paxson scoring eight of Chicago's last ten points. Scotty Pippen with another superb performance, putting to rest the stigma of the well-publicized migraine headache of a year ago. Here's Perkins. Yes! And it counts! With a minute 13 remaining in the fourth quarter, the Bulls lead by three, and Perkins will go to the line. The foul called on Paxson. Last thing you want to do is foul the shooter in this situation and give him an opportunity to make a three-pointer a different way. Perkins, 10 for 12. From the line, he has 21 points. He has been the focal point of the Laker offense. Down the stretch. It is a two-point lead for Chicago. The Bulls looking for their first ever NBA championship. The Lakers desperately trying to bring it back to Chicago for a game six. Paxson, yes! John Paxson again! Bulls lead 105-101. Lakers, incidentally, have one and a 20 in the timeout category. One full and a 20. Lakers have three full and a 20. Perkins drawing the double team. Magic also gets double coverage. Perkins for three. And Pippen rebound. Timeout. Jake indicating that Chicago successfully called for the timeout. Yeah, at this point now, the Lakers have to extend their defense, go after the basketball with some type of trap rotation, try to force the turnover, and then obviously you can't let them run the clock down, so you need to take a foul, and you don't want them to run most of those 22 seconds off. If you're going to foul, do it sooner than later so you get the ball back. The wrap against the Chicago Bulls coming into the playoffs. A large question mark involved. Could the supporting cast step up? Could they properly complement the combination of Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen? Well, the answer, a resounding yes. They have received big numbers from the likes of John Paxson and Horace Grant. Bill Cartwright has done it. The bench has come through. If you're going to foul somebody, you would like the ball to go into Cartwright's hands, who only shot 69% for the regular season, Grant only 71, and Pippen 70. The next Laker foul puts them over the limit, which means the Bulls go to the line. Lakers have been over the limit throughout this fourth quarter. John Paxson for the series is 32 for 49 for 65% shooting in the NBA championship series. Trying to foul Paxson, got the wraps on him, did not get the call, and now the whistle. They got the ball into the hands of one of their best free throw shooters, 83, 84% shooter from the foul line. Paxson controlled it. The Lakers tried to take the foul immediately. He just dribbled away from it, used up some more time off the clock before eventually getting it over to Pippen where the foul took place. And Pippen is a 70% free throw shooter. Not a bad choice from the Laker point of view. Tony Smith called for the foul. Scotty Pippen is 9 for 10 from the line. And Smith has fouled out. Terrific performance by the rookie from Marquette. 5 out of 6 for 12 points. The Chicago Bulls went 61 and 21 during the regular season. Best record in the history of the franchise. Only the ninth team in NBA history to win 60 games in a season.
They have swept through the playoffs. Beat the Knicks three in a row. Won the first game by 41 points. Knocked off the Sixers in five. Defeated Detroit in a four-game sweep. This, their first ever trip to the finals in their 25-year history. And they are now 24 and 7, 10 seconds away from a championship. They lead by six. Devox from three-point land. Michael Jordan gets to it. As we come up on 10 seconds remaining, he's fouled by Green. And the Bulls beginning to celebrate. 11 and 4 tenths seconds remaining. The Bulls lead by 7. Final seconds. Magic's three-point attempt blocked. Pippen comes away with it. And the Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship. The Bulls greeted by a portion of this foreign crowd as they try to get back to their locker room. For the Lakers, a different story. The Chicago Bulls domination of this series has to be considered a major surprise. Mike, there was no reason to believe that the Lakers would fall apart so dramatically. I think it was a combination of things. I'm not quite sure that everyone gave the Bulls the credit they deserved throughout the season. I think everyone felt the balance of power was in the West this year, that Portland, in fact, was the best team, and when the Lakers got by them, that the Lakers then were just going to put the Bulls away, but the Bulls team was a deceiving team. They did it with a very intricate offense in the half-court area, the ability to score in transition, and then the great team defense. And Michael Jordan has answered a couple of questions. There have been doubters over the years whether a team led by Jordan could win a championship, and it is so rare for a team that has a scoring champion to go the distance. Anyone who ever questioned whether Michael Jordan was willing to give up and sacrifice for a championship was completely wrong. It was a case that Jordan is such a great winner, such a great competitor, and wanted so badly. In the early stages, he took maybe too much upon himself, but only trying to win because he knew the supporting cast had not developed yet. But once they stepped up their level of play, the Pippen moving to a new level, Cartwright doing the job in the middle, Paxson knocking out the open shots, and then Grant blossoming into the player he did, then Jordan was willing to spread the wealth around and the last time that Phil Jackson won a championship in the NBA he was a member of the New York Knicks and the Knicks clinched on this same court here at the forum back in the 72 73 season when they were able to defeat the Los Angeles Lakers in five with the victory over Detroit in the Eastern Conference final the Bulls felt that they had grown up, they had matured, they felt the difference at that particular level was all about a mental state of mind. We discussed this in the past. They said that in previous seasons, the Pistons' mind games would get to them. Well, they got past that plateau. They came out very aggressively. Michael Jordan setting the stage in that series, and then they go on after losing the opening game at home, they go on to knock off the Lakers in five. But wasn't it a maturing factor, very similar to Detroit? They grew up. They come back and win two world championships back to back. The Bulls have learned their lessons well. They've grown up. They win a championship. The celebration has begun in the Chicago locker room. And they are celebrating in Chicago as the Bulls take the Lakers in five. I'm going to try and go down into the crowd and get to Michael Jordan. Guys, excuse me. Let me get through here. Clear, guys. Clear, guys. 
Michael Jordan is the unanimous MVP. He got all 11 votes. Here we are with Michael, surrounded by his mom and his dad and wife. <laughs> I didn't, under the hat, that wasn't fair, but I'm covered with champagne. I can hardly see. Michael, what does it mean to you? It means so much. I mean, not just for me, but for the team and for the whole city. It's been a seven-year struggle out here. When I first got into Chicago, we started at the bottom. And every year, we just worked harder and harder until we got to it. And, you know, it's, it's so gratifying. You know, I've appreciated so long in my life, you know, for my family, for my kids, everything. It's, it's the most proud day I've ever had. We read that when they broached the subject of the I'm going to Disney World commercial to you, you said only if all my teammates are involved. Yeah, I wanted that to happen, you know, for them. You know, they deserve it. Whatever I get, whatever financial situation I get from that, I'm going to spread it amongst the team. I didn't want it. I want the team to have it. I want everybody to prosper from this whole event. You know, it, it took a team to get to this point. Is there a sense of completeness and fulfillment for you now that might not have been there for all your other achievements before? Well, I wanted to get here. Uh, I, if, if I never got here, I would never have been disappointed about my career, but, you know, it capped it off. You know, it, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to the city. I'm just happy that I was able to be a part of, of history in the city of Chicago. Is there a feeling of a passing of the torch, Magic Johnson, to you? And did you have any words with him toward the end of the game? Well, I know we expressed our love for each other and, and the love of competition. You know, uh, you know he, he, he thanked me. He, he certainly was, he was very glad for me. <clears throat> but passing the torch, I mean, the NBA has got so many players that represents them, and I'm just happy to be a part of it. And I, I think besides myself, David Robson, Charles Barkley, all these other guys, is going to carry the label of the NBA from now on, and I'm just glad I'm a part of it. Do you have a quick thought about your husband's feats of daring do here? I'm just very proud of him, and I'm excited that they won the championship, and Chicago's very excited. He deserved everything. What are you going to do next? How are you going to spend your offseason? with my family, play a lot of golf if she lets me. So I'm just going to relax and enjoy this. Michael, congratulations. Thank you. All right, we'd like to thank all of you for a, a terrific season of NBA basketball here on NBC. After 25 years, the Bulls are NBA champions.